Welcome to Real Talk Christian Podcast, where we drink coffee and have real conversations on faith, culture, and society. I'm your host, Chris Fuller. And I'm Mark Hyde. And on today's episode, Mark and I are sitting down to discuss uh, what are the Nephilim and why are they in the Bible? It's going to be an interesting conversation, but a fun one at that. So, Mark, are you ready to do this? Roar! Let's go. Bro, you should have saved the roar for two weeks from now because then we're going to be discussing the dinosaurs. Oh, that's a good plug. So in two weeks, we're talking about dinosaurs? We're talking about dinosaurs. Yes. Two weeks. Well, I'm like, the Nephilim, I'm like, that sounds like a dinosaur, but I'm like, I forgot. Nephilum, he's like, he's like that was a screw roar. up. Should we restart the episode? <laughs> no. Because Nephilum are it. people. The, and I was giants. thinking Leviathan. That's a dinosaur. Because <laughs> I'm like, crap, what's 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 a, what's a good dinosaur sound? Because the Nephilum like, like the Leviathan. I like almost did the Chewbacca. I was like, oh, no. I almost put Chewbacca on him. Roar. <laughs> that was embarrassing. It reminded me of uh, <laughs> uh, Mon- Katy Perry, you fools. Monsters University. Oh, but when okay. Mike Wazowski is like, they're like, come on, give us a run. He's a little kid. He's like, roar. <laughs> Man, I haven't seen Monsters University since theaters. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, I saw it in theaters. So it used to be Noel's favorite. In the day. It used to be Noel's favorite movie. You know, okay, so, so the OG Monsters Inc. was one of Christopher's, my, my baby brother for reference, one of his favorite movies right i don't think i've really watched it but maybe one time mm. elliot was like super sensitive to like someone i'm gonna uh, turn this music down just a little bit more elliot was like super sensitive to things to the point where he was sure. scared of marshmallow and frozen one uh, but but he was fine with jurassic world so i don't i don't really you know it's weird what I don't kids understand. are okay with and what they're not okay he with. he was so. totally oh cool totally okay watching jurassic park with the dude like sitting in the pooper getting like his head bit off but the marshmallow from Frozen 1 scares you, boss? Like, dude, I'm confused. Yeah, I don't understand it. But, hey, we need to keep rolling on this. We, yeah. we got to keep the banter short because guess what? For those of you who are in the Facebook group, you already know this. But those who are not in the Facebook group. It's too late. It was like it's too, too late. Months ago. You've missed it. But we had a special giveaway in the Real Talk Christian Podcast Community Facebook group. Yep. If you have not joined that Facebook group, you should join now because... You never we, know we're going to go live we, again. We're going to be doing little small giveaways here and there throughout that group. Also, don't forget to check us out on YouTube if you're not already watching us because... Uh, we should be, well, we might be rolling out some apologetics. You might be. Here. I'm probably still in the Soon. hospital. So, yeah, you're probably still Not because of me or because no, of, little, you know. No, little baby Lennox. Baby Lennox. So. I was officially told last night I am not allowed to call him baby Lenny. Lenny? Lenny, like Lenny Kravis. I can't call him Lenny. And I'm like, oh, babe, can I call him Knox? Like a little, like, you know, like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a little uh, tribute to where you come from? And she goes, no. I'm like, okay. <laughs> can we call him <laughs> Professor X? Oh. <gasps> <laughs> no, okay. You know what's wild though about this kid? This thing of like superpowers and all that. So like, like homeboy's got a heart condition, right? Right. We have a stuffed, like almost anatomically correct heart as like a lovey for him. We have like blankets that have hearts all over it. So basically, this kid's gonna be like a heartthrob because he's gonna have like so many heart things. Watch because he's got heart issues. Watch when he grows up, he's gonna be like, I'm scared to death of hearts. He's like, man, I, <laughs> he's, I, I've I got to hate Valentine's Day. I, I hate February. Why? I've got mental my problems mom because put me in hearts <laughs> when I was 14 for school pictures and everybody made fun of me. My snuggle time was a was a anatomically correct <laughs> heart. I have issues. <laughs> but, but you know the best part about this like anatomically correct heart on the front, like I mean, we're talking like has like the valves, the valves and the aorta yeah, and all cool. these things. But the the main part that he he has issues with with his a, aortic valve i think is the, the flapper right the flap on the back part of the heart right it's not in it's not on the lovey so that that kind of sucks well you know you could probably take well, a piece stuffy of, his lovey is you, a triceratops you could probably take when he's older and he's not going to be chewing on it you probably take a little piece of fabric and like little sew a little valve on it see there you can go beth you can do that creative his actual lovey is the triceratops so elliot is the t-rex and lennox is the triceratops why because dinosaur stuff is freaking cool. And we're going to be talking about that in two weeks. You know, what we should talk about right now? I got a, I got a question to ask all you. All right, so what's your question? This is the banter for you, all right? All right let's go. Totally this, this, unscripted. This is the party cue. This is the party cue. This all right, the party so cue. have you been keeping up with this whole new fad that's going out right now with the whole uh, tip culture and how tip culture is getting wildly out of hand? Tip like as in like giving a tip to like a waiter, like that yeah. type of tip culture? No, 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 no not a waiter because those are valid because waiters get paid 
dirt. Yeah. Like that's valid. Okay. I'm talking like anytime you go to a coffee shop or whatever. Okay, I, mean, I got dude, you. Dude, like you. even no. if you go to like a buffet where you serve yourself. <laughs> you go to Walmart and you got to tip them. <laughs> Basically though, but like Self checkout, you have to tip. <laughs> well, have you heard of this new thing that this restaurant has, it's officially has done over in California? They have, let's see, a restaurant customer says that she was charged a 5% employee health fee. Like what? A 5% fee was slapped onto her bill for, and I quote, and the receipt actually says, employee mental health. Wow. Fun facts with Timothy Hyden. Now, I mean, have you heard about people talking about, like, annoyance taxes? No, but I can get behind Like, people those. at a restaurant where it's like, you were such a royal pain in the butt, we're going to charge you extra? See, I think that's fair. But, see, that's been around for a long time. Because when I first became a mechanic, we used to have a sign up in the shop, and it said, you know, standard price is, like, 125 bucks. Uh, if you, if you ask me a m- bunch of questions, it's uh, 150 bucks. If you annoy me, it's 250 bucks. And like the rates went up depending on how much, how much of a pain in the butt you were <laughs> like, that was a real sign. We had, but there's a sign in the graphic design community where it's like, if you let me do it, 500 bucks, it goes all the way to, um, like you look, you look behind me while I do it on the computer and it's like five times the price. You use my arms to do the typing. <laughs> and it's like, you do it yourself. Right. $10,000. Right. I was like, it's, it's the most hilarious thing. But sure. I saw that and I'm like, my goodness. So, and again, I need to read more into it. Cause I, I literally just read it when I was going to the bathroom right before we came downstairs. The so. boy can't be off of Instagram even when he's going to the bathroom. It's ridiculous. That's how I get my daily news. <laughs> that is not a good way to get your daily news. But I saw this and I'm like, okay, so is this one of those things where it's like they're trying to raise money for employee mental health or is this literally just Gen Z got a hold of the register? All right. So it's kind of crazy. But besides that, I, I got a serious question for you. Have you ever dropped your phone in the toilet? Um, not since I've dropped my flip phone in the toilet. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> I dropped my flip phone in the toilet one time. We need to make you a tether that like if it drops, it, like it just recoils and doesn't break. Uh, and you mean like a baby pacifier yes. like, shirt clip for clip, your phone? We're going to clip it on you for when you go into the bathroom so you don't drop your phone in the toilet. <laughs> man, people are getting too much TMI. But I yeah, saw that and I'm probably. like, man, so okay. So are we like, why are we doing a mental health fee? Is it the fact that we're trying to raise money for the mental health sake of the employees? Or is the fact that the employees just need to go get a better job i don't really know uh i don't know but i'm just like man this is wild. well you know we got a society full of people that everybody's you know something is wrong with them and there are a lot of things going out there but i think sure. social i mean we're going way off topic but like social media i feel like has caused such a different unique issue than we were ever expecting where it's like like you know like same, back same with dr md WebMD. Oh, WebMD. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I thought I'd be about Mountain Dew. I'm like, Mountain Dew? That has problems? If you don't have anxiety now, just Google a, a problem that you do have and you will have anxiety. Like right now, I'm like right now, my nose keeps running. And if I, you know, do WebMD, they'll probably say that I have like, I don't know, <laughs> like plantar fasciitis or something like that. Or they're, like, they're like, guess what? You have cancer. smallpox, even though it's been eliminated for I all these years. I that type of cancer. That's awkward. Uh, yeah, that, that's true. We, 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 we have a official pump, or a pumpkin, pumpkin pox. Why did I say that? Monkey pox. We have a monkey pox <laughs> epidemic going around Look, because, because you just, some people were scared of getting their kids vaxxed, apparently. You just said, you just said pumpkin pox. That's going to be the 2024 virus. The pumpkin pops. Watch out. It's the apocalypse. <laughs> Now, you're getting, now you're gonna get you're gonna get some Ill, <laughs> crazy virus from a pumpkin, the pumpkin box. <laughs> hey, Sabrina, should I make that part of the bingo? See if I can get like pumpkin wow. box and all these conversations. That's funny. No, please don't. <laughs> we got enough meatloaf as it is. What were oh, we even talking about? Bingo. Oh, oh, but the idea of the fact of like, okay, so way back in the day, like sure. you always had to start at the bottom. We were talking about this before we recorded about what like what we used to make back when we were like twenty twenty one. But like, man, we was we was big balling. We wasn't balling on a budget. We was big balling. And now you gotta, get t- you gotta get tipped for well, you're in my presence. I deserve a tip. It's true. But but it's the fact of like you and I, like, you know, there's the joke of like, you know, millennials can't afford houses and lane and whatnot, which it, it is true unless you're you know, if you're trying to buy a four hundred thousand dollar starter home, which is ridiculous. But like I think like um, what's the uh, property hunters and like all these big time house shows? We, we're having to have these grandos, five thousand square feet houses for, you know, a wife, a, a husband and wife and like two kids, and it's like Bruh, I grew up in like 1,200 square feet. Right. Like the four of us. Right. And mom wanted to kill us most of the time. I don't, there was, it wasn't until I was probably 17 years old where I did not share a room with one of my siblings. I mean, I like, shared a room with just, three other bros in college. That's just the way it was. 
it just be what it be. So, anyways, hey, let's move on. Man, we want to get some people we, mad. We have a lot going on. That's true. We have a lot going on. We have a lot going on after this look recording. You, you got a lot going on, big guy. You look good. And the time you look real good. is ten oh four. There you go. 10.05. All right, so uh, we're not drinking coffee tonight. I feel like we need to change the tagline to this show. Well, no. So here's the thing, right? I drank coffee before you came because I. I got home, you know, I said I've I was, had three cup. Well, I said I wasn't going to do a cup of coffee and, and then I cap. came home and I'm like, I, I ate dinner. And I'm like, you know what? I need a cup of coffee and I'm going to do that before Mark comes over because I already told him no coffee. So well, I, don't I, know, I asked, bad. I asked originally. I'm like, yeah. you mean bring decaf or something? Yeah, I mean, so, I've had three half calf, but I didn't want to drink cups of coffee. I didn't want to drink regular coffee in front of you because you had already requested not to drink caffeinated Aww, coffee. Thank you. And so hey, I busted out the tea. And so I go with the flow. So I would have drank coffee anyways. Yeah, exactly. That's my problem. Is that I don't want to be a bad influence. Oh, uh, thank you. Because I'll, I'll just <laughs> it, it, the classic question: If your friend jump off a cliff, would you do it? Mark's answer is yeah, probably. <laughs> sadly, wow. sadly, yeah. But anyways, we are drinking two different. We're drinking types. tea. I'm I'm drinking the what what is it the the big big low I don't know big low coffee the uh, a big mint, low spending lots the of mint dough. melody and then you are drinking I'm the drinking twinning. gingerbread tw- uh, gingerbread joy by twinning by twinnings of London. But yeah. this is actually a pretty solid low cup. It man. is. It, yeah. But here's the deal. All right. So as much as we, I mean. We still love coffee, guys. Oh, like, we drink coffee dude, all the time. Dude, I, I've been pounding that uh, Mexican roast of that Kalamazoo coffee company you yeah, gave me. It's a good. I haven't even tasted it's it yet. It's actually phenomenal. <laughs> it's actually really <laughs> good. good. Because, okay, so it's a local coffee shop in Kalamazoo, and yep. they happen to get into a very select, I mean, let's just call it what it is, the bougie grocery store in our area. Yeah. So it's actually some decently freshly roasted coffee. Yeah. It's, it's pretty damn good. I think good. they said it was roasted in December of 2022. I think it was only like a month old when I bought it. Which for uh, convenience store or Heck grocery store is well, pretty dang good. Heck really good. Now it ain't as good as like going real local. It was like you know roasted no, four days ago. That know, stuff's you, good. You roast coffee, you seal it up. You know if it's if it's sealed and not open, it's good for two months. If it's not open, once you open it, you got like two weeks to drink you it out before it starts losing. But so I've been drinking that a lot. I mean, we're all about the good coffee up in here, yeah. right? Yeah. But well, we also are all about the fact that we old and want to sleep. Because um, last Saturday, I got like, I don't know, five hours of sleep. That's about what I got. And you we know, drank you, too much coffee. And so I've been, okay, so I've had to work like longer shifts, work after the kids go to bed type sure, stuff. Sure, sure. Um, I have felt tired since last Friday. Yeah. And so I figured sure. I probably should get some sleep tonight. Probably. But yeah, so that's why we're drinking tea tonight. But so, so I drank Kalamazoo coffee today. What, 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 what coffee did you drink today, my my guy? What, what, what was what was you pounding? Like Costco I, stuff again? I, well, I did the Costco in the morning, which is so and wild. And then that I drank a decent coffee. I drank a Honduran Mexican Ooh. blend. Okay. Uh, I forget what it was called. It was from. It was the one my father in law got me. It was a bougie coffee. Oh. And, you uh, hear that, ladies and gentlemen? Fuller is officially bougie and Marcus semi bougie. Just with the coffee. Just, <laughs> I am bougie with the coffee. But, anyways, so uh, yeah, that's what we're doing. Let's go ahead and read our review. It's a short it's review. A short one. I'm trying to keep us rolling here. We gotta we gotta stay on track because we do have a time limit today. This, this is from R T. Woo, crazy. R two D two crazy. R T W O. No, it's just W W E. R two crazy, bro. What was the old wrestling? That was W E WWF's competitor. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't W. There was WWE. No, there was, a, but but before WWF, there was a competitor. It wasn't TNT. It was like oh, I don't remember. I think it was TWO. SmackDown. I don't know. No, that's WWF, and that was also with Rock. Come on, bro, get your wrestling facts together. I wasn't really big into wrestling. Y'all can call them out in the Facebook group. But either that's way, right. we got a review from R Two Crazy from back in October, and it starts with "Love y'all guys, love y'all guys, love y'all guys." Man, y'all too crazy. Says I found this podcast today, which is baller. I've been listening to y'all on Spotify, and I thought I'd give you a good rating because I love what y'all do with spreading the word of God. Well, I, I R2 th- Crazy, thank you, boss. I don't think he was saying that's my name. I think he's telling us we are R2 Crazy. Y'all too crazy. <laughs> that's what he's saying. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> that's really fair. It, now that I read it and it's like, love y'all guys. Man, y'all are too crazy. <laughs> I mean, dude, so many people, is like, let's, let's be honest, you guys come for the conversation, but y'all stay for the banter. Y'all know it. Well, most of the y'all YouTube... Most of the YouTubers, they don't make it past the eight minute mark, so that's pretty much banter. But and that's okay. We are going to jump into the conversation. Oh, actually, I'm going to pause you. No, I'm not going to let allow it this time. If you have a connection with local radio station and want to get us on the air, that'd be awesome. All right, a good morning talk show. Continue. 
<laughs> Rein you in, all right? We got to stick to the program all right, so here, Mark. So the Nephilim who are not dinosaurs. So I no, roared poorly. Rawr. I will do. I will. I will do my roar in two weeks again, guys. <laughs> rawr. <laughs> rawr. All right. So what are the Katie, Nephilim, Katie and Barry, wh- why are they in the Bible? That's what we're discussing today. And this question actually came from. Somebody in the Facebook oh, really? group. It did. Oh, I didn't realize it that. It did. They asked, uh, what are the Nephilim? That's what you guys should discuss the Nephilim along with of, you guys should talk about the dinosaurs. So oh, both, oh, oh, is that the same thread? Both those topics See, are in the same thread. And that's why I went, Rawr! And so, the episode. And so My this bad. is why, My again, bad. another plug in, this is why it's important to be part of the Facebook group because then you control the content we talk about. Uh, let's not go that far. Y'all suggest it and we just love you so much. No, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> All right, so what are the Nephilim? So the Christianity.com says this about the Nephilim. The Nephilim are mighty men, quote-unquote, described in the Old Testament as incredibly large and physically strong. Mm. Uh, scholars and That's com- me. Sc- scholars and commentators. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. <laughs> That's me, Lamalio. Scholars and commentators translate the word Nephilim as giants or fallen ones. Even among the most brilliant, there is a debate on translating this term. One reason Nephilim is also translated as fallen ones is in the relation of the Hebrew word nafal, which means to fall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, who are the Nephilim and where did they come from? Right. So uh, we find uh, the word Nephilim is found in two main Bible passages, right? And the first is Genesis 6, 1 through 6, and then again in Numbers 13, 13. And scholars and commentators translate the word as giants are fallen ones. So for centuries, scholars from Judaism and Christianity have presented different views on who the Nephilim were. Number one, we're going to go through some of these. Views. I will say you said numbers 13, 13, but it's number 13, 33. That's what I meant to say. In case we got Bible checkers out there. Thank you for you that are Bible checkers. Thank you. Bible checkers like <laughs> king me. <laughs> Sorry, I'm way out there today. All right, so the first few we're going to talk show, about, guys. Yeah, so the first view is the fallen angels had relations with the daughters, quote unquote, of men, uh, which resulted in part human, part supernatural being. Got some AKA super babies, the like the Hercules. Like so Thor. The support of the theory. I'm going to just read through this so we get to the conversation part. Okay, I'll try to keep my mouth shut. No, that you don't have to. But so, uh, so the support for this theory. Uh, I'm going to give support and uh, opposition. To some of these theories, uh, a verse that supports uh, of the, uh, wait, 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 wait. Should we get the support for all of them and then go back to the opposition, or you want to do the support in opposition? Well, I kind of want to do yeah for each one. So, okay, I got you. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the support for the th- this theory, right, of of the supernatural being the nephilim, uh, a verse that supports this position uh, turns uh, is Job one six. It says, "Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also was." came among them. So sons of God and Job is talking about some type of heavenly being, right? If we just want to stick in that realm right now and not say angel or anything like that, but some sort of heavenly being, cause they were in the presence of God, uh, that they were before the Lord and Satan came among them. Which so, that verse that get, brings up a whole host of questions. Yes, it does. So whole host of questions. In connection to this verse, Job thirty eight seven also tells us when the morning stars sang to. Uh, I'm sorry, when the morning song stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Uh, these verses use the same term found in Genesis six. Theologians historically have interpreted the sons of God as angels, which fit right into the context of these verses. One main scripture passage used to defend this view is Jude one six through seven, and the, and it says this: and the angels who did not keep their proper domain but left their own abode, he had reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to these, having given themselves over to the sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh and set forth an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal life. So, which I, I will say that's, that's how I was taught growing up. So that's kind of how I was taught too, right? I, I was kind of always taught that that's what it was. So but let's, we're going to. Yeah. I mean, but it's so, but before we get into the opposition, it's wild to think of angels. Cause it's like, here, here, here's the question I always have, right? So if angels come down, you know, find humans and and then you have babies. Why did that just happen in this one little passage, the beginning of like, or in the beginning of Genesis that we don't see it anymore? Sure. You know, it's kind of like the whole evolution thing where it's like, oh, if evolution happened way back then, why don't we still see it today? Sure. I'm not saying I want to have some weird superhumans or nothing like that. I mean, Shaquille O'Neal's a superhuman in and of himself, but I don't think he's a, I don't think he's a Nephilim. Okay. You know, so, so, so but it's <laughs> yeah. just like, it's just right. wild to think sure. like the, I, I'm just trying to grasp my little tiny brain around the idea of like, holy crap, if that was true, I don't know if it is, but is it? 
Well, that's I don't, wild. I don't know. Let's continue on. All right. <laughs> let's hear the let's hear the opposition for this theory. Okay. So one pushback for this position is the angelic beings don't have the DNA to combine with humans. They are spiritual beings. Therefore, it is not possible that they can produce offspring. Again, this assumes that angels can't have the same DNA as humans. Some would argue that it's uh, that it's possible because we see two angels took the form of human in Genesis 19, 1 through 13, which is when they go to see Lot. Uh, who is to say they can't carry the full reproductive capabilities? So where that argument come in, comes in is that things produce after like things, right? So this is, right. again, another, another type of um, opposition to this theory. Um, is that like, okay, so a, a orange tree produces oranges, a cat produces a cat, though it may be a different, like, not species, but a, a, t- a different well, type well, of Well, you can variation. only reproduce with the inside of your own. Like, like right. a dog's a dog. Right, a dog's a dog, a cat's There's a cat. There's different breeds of human, dogs. A, right, exactly. And so that's kind of the big argument behind and against this theory is, yes, angels are created beings, but are they... But God says, let us make man in our image. So he doesn't say right. that about the angels. And so they're not in the same species realms, at least in the mind and in speculation. Yeah. Right. And there's two thoughts that come from this with me. One is that one verse. Oh, goodness. Was it Ephesians where it talks about like the angels don't even understand the mysteries of the God? Sure. And it kind of shows the same idea of the fact of angels are different than humans, which again, this, this, this. This theory well, supports it, it, that, that angels are different than humans. But if they can't even understand human salvation, here's the where the, the the weird thinking goes. If angels can't even understand salvation and they produce like half men, half angels, like some Hercules vibe going on, how can they then understand the gospel and then receive it sure. and follow after God as well? But here's the other thing, right? And here's the other scripture that's a really big key point in this, which makes me go, huh? Right. Mm-hmm. And it's the one that says, uh, and they, and, and in heaven talking about the new heavens and new earth, right? right. It says, oh, they'll that be just like the angels. They will be just like the angels, neither given in marriage or not, neither uh, it, ha- being married or given in marriage. Right. Which also means in the Bible, marriage is always, always meant, you know, consummation. consummation right. Becoming you know, and, one flesh. Having babies. Becoming one flesh. So right. if they're, if they're going to be like the angels in heaven, not married or given in marriage, does that mean this, that, they're, how can they have reproductive if they're angels? Right. right? And, and, you know, and, and, and the, we have to think of words the same way we do words now. Like right. we can use words for different times, for different contexts, sure. it means different sure. things. Right. Like, you know, back in the day, if you said like, like, you know, easy, ex- easy example, like the word gay, right? Sure. Back in the day happy was, was and, happy and joyful and cheerful right. and all these different things. Carefree. And, and, and now it's, it's same sex attraction and, and the homosexual lifestyle versus heterosexual. Like it's, sure. it's very different, but it's the sure. same word. So if you go too much into word, um, well, and that's etymology, what, then you can get a little big size. now, but, but granted we have to understand ancient, but culture, also, ancient words too. How do you define it? Right. If I say, well, the boy was jumping around, skipping down the road, licking his lollipop in a gayish, gayest manner. That is a very, based on who interprets what you just said, that's very different. So you have that. Or if I say, uh, oh, uh, it's a bright sunshiny day and they're happy and gay. Like, Okay. That's a, if you look at the context of it, okay, I can see how it could mean. Okay, you're just kind of carefree, right? Right. Depending on the on the surrounding context of that story, and that's the other thing we have to look at here. What's the context that they're talking about, right? So uh, we're talking about a form of marriage, and that one scripture we just mentioned. Um, you know, we're seeing uh, up here uh, in Genesis 19, 1 through thirteen. You know, there could be. Um, they could present themselves as angels. So you're seeing that side of things where, okay, or I'm sorry, as uh, humans. So, okay, can they take on a form of a human and do the dirty? Right, right. And it means. But does that mean they have reproduction? Does that mean they're just like what I think of like the Christmas carol, just like a spirit, but you can't touch the spirit. You go right through the spirit, you know? (laughs) Is it kind of like a, uh, what's that movie? Ghost with, uh, um, Oh, what the heck you is You whacked your mic again. I know. What the heck is their name? Uh, Patrick Swayze and uh, oh, Debbie Moore. Patrick Swayze and Debbie Moore. Yeah. You know, is it like I've one of those seen it, things? I talking about. Whoopi Goldberg. It's weird. Uh, so, I mean, it's one of those things where, you know, he's like, tries to touch her and like. But I also think of when that. Jesus reappeared to the disciples in his perfected body. Sure. And so if our perfected body is our heavenly well, bodies, what, do angels what, also have heavenly wait bodies? Wait a second. You know? Was it a perfected body? Jesus's? When he appeared. Because he said, do not touch me. Or I have not what ascended to my father. Ah, uh, okay. So was it the perfected body? Maybe not. I, who knows? I right. Uh, so I don't know. It's just that's that's theory number one. You know, that's and, what surrounds theory number and, one. And, and hang on here for one more second. The the other question then comes into okay. So is is the Genesis account more 
poetry and narrative and not definitive fact or is and some people even say that well job is a uh, not poetry i'm sorry um a book of what's the word i'm looking for um they, they call it mytho history sure and so does it have a little bit of that flavor in there too to try to describe what was happening even though we don't well fully see, understand so it. so this is where i leave know? me personally right sticking in that to my me right mm -hmm. i stick with more of the traditional Hebrew interpretation, right? If you go and ask a Jew their interpretation on that, even the Hebrew scholars, right? They're going to say, no, man, it's literal. It's, oh, it's I, not just poetic language. And you and I agree with that right. too. But the that, other question is about Job too, because Job is also considered a poetic book. Sure, so is sure. that more of a trying to set the stage well, it's, for it's, what happened? It's, again, it's, it's similar to the argument that you and I have had about the parable of Lazarus and the and the rich man, right? Mm -hmm. Is it a parable? Uh, or is, is it, it is a parable? It, or is, or is, it, is it real? Is it, is it, is it a story or is it something that truly happened and you know different views but really we don't know it's all speculation right but for job right we have to take it at face value of uh, i mean i personally believe that that happened now how did the the things that happened in the heavens uh translate down into pen and paper the only thing i could say is God must have told somebody if that was true. If that truly happened, then God would have had to tell that. And right? and so. so, but but all we know is the same word for sons of God was used in two different places in Job. Right. And then there's that little support passage with Jude. But then, right. so when we go back to it, the well, fact of when you ever see talks sons about, of God, okay, in other so places, right? And that little passage of Jude, just to remind you that it's talking about. Uh, how they themselves were over in sexual immorality, right? Had gone after strange flesh. And this is talking of um, the angels. The angels. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain. So that's what Jude is saying, right? So that, that's theory number one. We're not saying we agree or disagree with theory number but one. But that's, that's just compelling the way, because if Jude says the way, that angels that's back the, in the day right, that's had the sex way. with, like it even says, like they're not, like, like a... a, a, a after strange flesh, what the right. heck does that mean? What is strange flesh? What is that, right? Uh, but they're also getting punished for it too, right? Right. So All it right. says, but they abode he So, so theory one is, is the right. fact of it was legit like some weird superhuman crap. Right, right. So the second theory, the the second position held by, uh, by some is that demons or fallen angels possessed men then had relations, relations with the daughter of men, resulting in the Nephilim. So when we discuss the second view, the fallen angel possessed man, uh, it may be, uh, begin to connect with some of us because we can see the reality of demonic possession in today's world from the movies in Hollywood to witchcraft around the globe. Uh, it's real. So the heart of the question, are the sons of God, if human, able to become possessed? And the answer is, well, there's no evidence in the Bible to support this idea that God's children can become demon possessed, right? So if they're truly the sons of God and the daughters of men, how can the sons of God be demonically possessed? Yeah, that one that one doesn't. So make that sense. one doesn't. I mean, right? But I could see how if they if, now if they're referring to the angels possessing somebody, the angels themselves being the sons of God. Mm -hmm. Okay, then maybe that could track, right? I'm, I'm looking up a resource because because there there was another thought that I had from a resource that I read earlier. So I'm. I'm pulling up my 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 so, commentary, so guys. You I'm, not, to, I'm not texting. Do you want me to stall a little bit? Nope, you're good. Keep going, boss. <laughs> well, I'm I'm ready to move on because. No. Oh, I'm good. There's not that one doesn't make any sense to me. To me, to me, okay. If they're if they were possessing men, okay. But then, I mean, because you could see possession possession happen throughout all of scripture. Uh, we see possession happening at different times through history. Uh, so it could. Uh, I think if that's going to happen, a possession would still produce a regular human, right? It wouldn't produce um, the mighty men of old. How right. could it, right? How could right. it? And that one just using, doesn't make sense. If you're using human DNA to impregnate human DNA to make human DNA, then it would be human DNA, right? So that's kind of, I, I kind of, I'm throwing it out there. I'm giving all sides of it, but I just, yeah, that's where I'm at with that one. All right, so the third position called the Sethite view is held by some scholars. The Sethite view defines the sons of God as the righteous line of Seth. So the Sethite view that the Nephilim were from the lineage of Seth is gr growing rapidly in the church and it possibly the most common view today among scholars. Here, the sons of God are defined as the righteous line of Seth, Genesis 5, that disobeyed God and married women from the line of Cain, which would be the daughters of men. Mm -hmm. Some believe that women were not exclusive to Cain's family line. 
The women who married the line of Seth followed other gods and rejected full allegiance to God. The offspring, as a result, fell away and to turn to the system of the world. According to Jewish historical writings and literature, as early as the first century, Jewish scholars have favored this view. St. Augustine and John Calvin are famous scholars and theologians who have held this position. Here we are assuming that from Seth to Noah, Enosh, Kenan, um, Malal, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, all the past members were obedient to God to preserve a righteous lineage. And, you know, and this is what I was looking for. And so this kind of goes with that whole thought is the fact of, you know, so if they were just righteous men, right, and they were just considered the sons of God and, and they were, for lack of better, all intents and purposes, the, the, like, like what you said, the righteous lineage, right? right? right sure. When the Israelites went into Canaan, mm-hmm. they said that they saw these giants. Sure. You and, know, and we're going to get into that. Oh, we are. Okay. We're going to get into that. I saw this and I'm like, oh, there's something that I read about this. The fact of that they, that, that like there was the, the post post flood events when the spies returned from Canaan, they reported to see giants in the land, we're, the yeah. Anakim, the sense of Nephilim. Yeah. We'll get into that. Slow down. Okay. So don't, I didn't, don't jump ahead. <laughs> I didn't mean to. My bad. So, My bad. So with this one, right? Okay. So it does make a lot of sense, right? Okay. Seth, you know, the, the sons of God, Cain. Yep. He was, he was, uh, you, you know, his, his offering was rejected. He killed Abel. Uh, he was marked. He was sent away. These are the things that happened. So, oh yeah, he was he was disobedient, unrighteous. Okay, but how do you explain the mighty men of old then, right? Because again, if it's just daughters and sons of humans, how are you getting these heroes of old out of that, right? How are you doing that? And to me, so to me, it doesn't make sense because what would make them more special than any other human? I don't have an answer for that. So now, that's well, where well, that's the opposing thought to this one, right? And this is where this one kind of is like, uh, okay, yeah, it kind of makes sense. But then how do you answer these? And it could be one of those things, though, where, and this is a question that Beth and I have talked about recently, is how did Adam and Eve have other kids in the garden? Sure. Like how many kids were bebopping around the garden? I'm sure a bunch. Well, like, not or in the garden, none. I don't think they had any kids in the garden, personally. But, but I'm just trying to remember what I what I read in Genesis, and I'm trying to remember if it says if they had it. Because didn't the Bible say be fruitful, multiply while they were still in the garden? I believe so, but but that's not the storyline we get, right? The storyline is they sinned, they were kicked out of the garden, and then we go into they bore children at that point, Cain and Abel. But again, but it, but that my, my question so is always you're, you're speculating that there was right. But let me finish I'm the saying, thought though. Yeah, go ahead. So because from that, because God also says, um, you're you will have more pain in childbearing. Sure. Well, well, how would you even know what the pain would be? Like, okay, cool. I don't even know what that is. But with that, my my thought was because you have all these mighty cities that were huge coming out of Cain and Abel and all these other different places. So mm-hmm. if there already were mighty cities, there would have to be other people somehow. So we don't know what the timeline necessarily is. So is it one of those things coming off of here where there is a righteous line and kind of like a, what were the years in, uh, what were the years of Adam? 900 and something. Right. So 900, say, say, say they were in the garden a hundred years. That gives 800 years for things to progress into mighty cities. And you got to think about it, right? They lived longer, which means they had more knowledge, which means that they were had more ability to build things, to plan things out better, to their bodies were in better shape physically. So it's still plausible with no kids in the garden to come outside of the garden and still be able to have mighty cities. And so I take it the Bible at I take the Bible at face value in this point, right? I take it as well. Let's just pull it up. Yep, we're both doing it. Let's just let's just pull it up because why not? Uh, let's see here. This is, this is why we get sidetracked sometimes. All right. So we're going Genesis six. Uh, it's no it's before six. I think it's four. Six is where they talk about the Nephilim. Four is where they talk about Cain. So in chapter four, the beginning of chapter four, it says the man was intimate with his wife, Eve, and she conceived and gave birth to Cain. She said, I have had a male child with the Lord's help. She also gave birth to his brother, Abel. Now, Abel became a shepherd of flocks, but Cain worked the ground. In in the course of time, Cain presented some of the land's produce as an offering to the Lord, and Abel also presented an offering, some of the firstborn of the flock and the fat portions the Lord had regarded for Abel and his offering. 
but he did not have regard for Cain and his offering. Cain was furious and looked despondent. So let's go back to Genesis 3 at the end of Genesis 3, and let's see what that says. So uh, verse 20 says, the, the man named his wife Eve because she was the mother of all the living. The Lord God made clothing and skins for the man and his wife, so it only talks about man and his wife, and he clothed them. The Lord God said, since the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil, he must not reach out, take from the tree of life, eat, and live forever. So the Lord God sent him away from the garden to work the ground from which he was taken. He drove the man out and stationed the cherubim and the flaming whirling sword east of the Garden of Eden to guard the way to the tree of life. That's so so I'm says. tracking. So, so if we look at the chronological sequence, they're in the garden. And then it says in chapter four that Adam and Eve it became intimate. Be, you know, That's the first time you see them And then all of a sudden, and then there's Cain, and then there's Abel, then after Abel, there's right. Seth. And then we have all the lineage and everything. And then what's interesting is, you know, this chapter on the Nephilim comes on the heels of the lineages of Cain and the lineages of Seth. So I think this is a fair idea if the fact if we look at the lineages of you know if chapter five or four is you know Cain and Abel and the murder and then it has the lineage of Cain and sure. then chapter five has the lineage of Seth and then all, all of a sudden the sons of men versus the 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 what, what was it the daughters the the sons of God and the daughters of men and the daughters of men so you got sons of God daughters of men and so there could be a, a a comparison between those two and a symmetry with that because if you if you go into the way Jewish writings were done nothing was done on accident they normally built upon each other so it's kind of like you have a and b and so therefore then here's what's next c in that lineage so, so that kind of makes sense i'm trying to find i sometimes i like this happens sometimes i don't genesis 4 why is it genesis chapter 7 i don't want 7 so what are you looking for i want 6 uh i am looking for i'm in my hebrew study bible i'm sorry um, so let's read six where, where this for this Nephilim is talked about. It says it came to, this is from the Hebrew study Bible. It came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of nobles saw the daughters of men and they were fair and they took them wives whomsoever they chose. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not abide in man forever for he or for that he also is flesh, therefore shall his days be 120 years. The Nephilim were in those, uh, I'm sorry, the Nephilim were in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of nobles came in, to, in unto the daughters of men, and they bore children to them, the same were the mighty men of, were of old, the men of renown. So if you read it from that context, right, from the, this, and this is the Hebrew study Bible, so this is Hebrew scholars, in present time, mm -hmm. uh, they're making it sound like it was just like kingly men. Mm -hmm. The sons of God were kingly men. So at that point, you could say, okay, that's pretty plausible, right? And that the mighty men were just like heroes, but not necessarily, necessarily giants. So we're not talking giants if you look at that. We're talking just mighty men like we would consider, not like Hercules, but like David. David was a mighty, him and his mighty men. Him right? and the mighty men, yeah. So if you look at that context, okay, the, the Sethite view um, does make a lot of sense, but with that, but with this specific theory, it's not just anyone. It's specifically from the lineage of Seth, Seth or, right. the, or the or the, the, right, the righteous, the righteous lineage, and then you got the, the Cain's lineage, which is the unrighteous, and then right. they started having kids together, right? Well, and marrying and whatnot. So that's so, the okay. Sethite view, okay? So that's that's the third view. So so far, we found that they're like half so, human, half angels. The second was they were they, they were demon they were, possessed. The men were demon possessed and came into the daughters of Eve. And the then the third, third is the Sethite view, which, okay. which is where we're saying the lineage of Seth married uh, the sons from the lineage of Seth, the righteous lineage, married the daughters of Cain, the the disobedient lineage, lineage, and they had uh, babies and they were worshiping false gods and they were doing all this stuff, and the mighty men were just like warrior type people. Okay. So that's that's number three. All right. Lastly, number four, and this is the minority, right? This is the one that most people don't believe in. Uh, a view held by the minority is the sons of God were simply fallen men. So the last view claims that the sons of God were godly men who married ungodly women, not from the line of Seth, just common men. Uh, the result of this union was the Nephilim, a group of offspring that fell away. Debate with the theory. Again, we must go. Uh, I'm sorry. Debate with the theory. Again, we must go back to the fact that this uh, that there is still a debate as to the, what the term Nephilim 
means as it relates to the verb series to fall or the Hebrew word nafal. The view relies on the verb series nafal, which means fallen or to fall. Support for the theory, the, uh, this portion is consistent with scripture, both pre, pre and post flood, meaning before the flood, these offspring were fallen men after the flood when God destroyed everyone but the family of Noah. These Nephilim are still showing up in Numbers 13.33. Therefore, the Nephilim are simply fallen men. So it has nothing to do with the fact that they're giants. It's just a fact of they're just literally dudes who don't follow God. Sure. So, so those are kind of the four mainstream views in, in a sense. And I don't know. How are you feeling about those views? You know, I, I'm the, the the more I think about it, I mean the 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 first view, right? We're talking about like angels and humans, like that one is an absolute joke until you read Jude. Right. I feel like Jude is all of a sudden it's like, oh well so wait it, a minute. But it talks about it, it uses the same sons of God in Job and in Jude. Right, but but the the the, the Job one doesn't throw me off as bad as the Jude one because but, the Job like, oh the sons of God okay but they're talking you know. about the sons of God and it's the same Hebrew word correct as it was in Genesis 6. But what I what I mean is the fact of you can use, you know, the same phrase to represent two different things. It's sure. the fact that it says that angels had sexual immorality with weird uh, what was that? Not weird flesh. With un, 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 uh, let me see if I can find it. We're doing great with our memory today, guys. Yeah, uh, with sexual uh, after strange, strange flesh. after strange flesh. So, what the heck does that mean? Like that's right. where I'm going. Whoa. Um, I mean, if you were to ask me what my opinion is, I do think that they are just normal dudes, right? I think they're normal. I think they're just humans. Maybe they're giants. Maybe they're the Shaquille O'Neals and the Yao Ming's of the people. I don't know. Um, you know where Goliath came from, but I do think that there's something that to be said around the idea of they are showing up post flood. So, what does the word nephilim actually mean? I mean, if if they get the word from fall, you know, I if you were to ask me, I would just say these are men who fell in some way shape or form, whether fell in battle, fell in war, fell because of God, you know, disobeying God. So it had to be fallen with something. Not, okay. But people would say, well, they fell from heaven. So let's read okay. the Jude passage again, but this time I'm going to read it in the from the scripture the app the scripture direct, which is like supposed to be like a direct translation over, right? Like awkwardly word for word sometimes. Well, yeah. not not right? no, it's not it's not an interlinear. Oh, okay, it's it's interlinear, but they add in like some of the adder words and the they kind, words they kind of rearrange it to make yeah they they rearrange it to make it make sense. Okay, right? so it says we're going to start in five, we're going to go through seven. It says this is Jude. I further want to remind you, though you know it. All that the Lord, once having delivered his people from Egypt, afterwards destroyed those not having believed, and angels not having retained their own sphere of rule, but deserted their own dwelling place. He has kept for judgment of the great day with everlasting chains under darkness, just like Sodom and Gomorrah and the towns around them, in the same way as those engaged in sexual immorality, indeed having homosexual intercourse, they are clearly an example of suffering, punishment of eternal fire so is that that passage sounds like it's talking about so to me Sodom and Gomorrah. well no to me it sounds like the angels have retained their own uh uh not having retained their own sphere of rule but deserted their own dwelling place like they peace heaven. he he has kept the judgment of the great day with everlasting chains under darkness just like so it's a comparison He's and, not saying that they did right. the same thing. And he's the just sexual saying, immorality act. He's saying talking about Sodom and Gomorrah. He's saying they they left their natural state just as the people, men of Sodom and Gomorrah left their natural state by having homosexual activities. Gotcha. Is what I read out of that's, this. That's that. what that sounded so, like more to me. So that's what okay, it sounds like. So if we look like at the Jude passage and understand it, says basically just say angels fell in the same way that Sodom and Gomorrah fell. They, they left their natural and they state. They both left their natural state of what God calls people to do. You know, then it would be an obvious, like it's some sort of, some sort of human. So out of these, whether it's a mighty noble man or I, I, I don't out know. of these four views. So uh -huh. I, I, again, I, I grew up on view number one, right? That they were. Yep. The, I was, I, I did too. And, and now really ever since I, and I want to do, I'm going to do more study on it, but my, my, the way I'm leaning now is more the Sethite view, mm -hmm. right? That the lineage of Seth, the righteous lineage and the, and the lineage of, of Cain. Um, again, it's speculation, right? right. But that's, that to me is more plausible than angels being a created creature that's not in the same uh, species as human creatures who right. are created in the image of God. Because again, we go back to what children. Jesus said about right. 
you'll be just like the angels. And I do think that there's something with the interlinear flow of Genesis three, four, five, and six, where it talks about three is the fall, and then four is birth of Cain and Abel, and the death of Abel, and then the you know Cain having to you know yep. go away and do his own thing, and then Seth shows up. Then chapter five is this massive lineage of Seth all the way to Noah. Then six and happens. Then six, all of a sudden, it's bam. It talks about how bad the world was, the and Nephilim. then Noah. Yep. And so there has to be some regards of righteous versus unrighteous. Now I do sure. think four is plausible. I think four is just as plausible as three in terms of it was just men versus. You know, Seth or, or what could be, but if you think about okay, who who is God blessing, right? If we go back to four and look at who God blesses, right? He didn't bless Cain. Mm-hmm. So if you were going to have kingly men or mm-hmm. noble men, who would they more more than likely come from? Because he honored Abel, but rejected Seth. Right. Oh, I'm sorry, rejected Cain. So sorry, not Seth. Rejected, but then uh, Seth came along, and we know that that is the righteous lineage because that's the lineage that Christ comes from. But then the question becomes is in Numbers 13, 33, when it's mentioned again, right. are they, are the Israelites, because, you know, like we're watching the chosen, like they, they, the Jewish people, you know, create words to call other people in reference to other things, you know, as derogatory sure, terms. Sure. So did the Israelites use the word Nephilim or fallen men there to just literally mean those are the dudes who don't follow God at all. Like we're the righteous and they're the not. Like did it, it did it evolve what their meaning was? Did they use it in other contexts? We don't necessarily know what the answer is to so, that one. So all it says is from between the passages. Okay, I mean, so so thirty three. Yeah, let's, let, let's look at it and let's, let's just read it. it. So this is the CSB. We're going to read thirty one. It yeah. says, "But the men who had gone up with him responded, we can't attack the people because they are stronger than we are." So they gave a negative report to the Israel about the land they had scouted. The land we passed through to explore is one of the devour uh, that devours its inhabitants, and all the people were saw in it as great or as men of great size. So, so pause. That's where it just as men of great size, and we saw these other people. That's thirty-two. And but 32. then it says we are even saw the Nephilim we there. Even saw the, the Nephilim. descendants of Anak come from the Nephilim. To ourselves, we seemed like grasshoppers, and we must have uh, seemed the same to them. So that's talking about their. They're saying they. But the question is, is, is how did they? How how did they come through Noah's lineage? So, well, hang on a sec. So, (laughs) exactly right, but But that's my question. Unless you think about if Noah's lineage. had some sort some of some sort of Cain lineage in I don't I don't know no no it came it's, from the line of Seth well I understand that but, but who, maybe but who maybe did one his, of Cain but his daughter in law sons but yeah. who did his daughter in laws come from right it was they went out and into the cities and found wives for themselves so at that then then you can say all right it might be still might be plausible we might we might still be tracking hang on I'm trying to pull up I'm trying to remember how to do this now home. Okay, I'm pulling up this uh, this uh, Hebrew study Bible again, and we'll see what we can come up with. Sorry, it takes me a little bit, too. No, you're good. It popped you to a really weird spot when you it, clicked on it. It always does. Uh, you're still in chapter 14, it looks like. Yeah. Doo, 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 doo. I was seeing what verse I was at, so I know how far to scroll, so I didn't scroll past it again. Okay, so we're going to do 32 and 33 again, right? Okay. And they spread an evil report of the land which they had spied out until the children of Israel, saying, the land through which we have possessed to spy it out is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are great, men of great stature. And they uh, there we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, A- Anak who come of the Nephilim, and uh, we were in our own in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. So again, is it they saw them as weak or they saw them as small? It doesn't really... But at the end of the day, it's saying th- it, the, the Israelite spies made a very obvious separation. So what made them separated? Was it their skin color? Was it their height? Was it well, so physical made, markings? Right, but, Was it their but hair color? Was uh, it a bunch of Irish people? But we look at the context like red again, hair. right? It says... We look like grasshoppers. They're little. So why did they say we look like grasshoppers and not like, okay, we look like 
basically they were a, puny a compared to these people. Right. Like, these people were beasts. So yeah, right. So something was different, right? They were NBA players. So all right. So let's let's move on a little bit because the question is, is if, are they still around? Like you know, well is, we got to yeah. Did, uh, when did they die out? And well, you know, did they re- reappear after the flood? Uh, uh, you know, who who the Netflix? I got so questions. We, we're, we still got a lot to go, and we're already at the almost fifty minute mark, and we got to we got to end it here we soon. Got to go. So uh, what are the Nephilim? This comes from Got Questions Out Our friends over there. And it says, uh, the Nephilim were one of the primary reasons for the great flood in Noah's time. Immediately after the mention of Nephilim, God's word says, the Lord saw how great man's wickedness on the earth had become, and that every inclination of the thought of his heart was only evil all the time. Only evil all the time. The Lord was grieved that he had made man on the earth, and his heart was filled with pain, which that should be another good episode. Does, does God like think he makes mistakes because he grieved? Or sometimes it, some past or some Bibles translate it. He regretted, mm-hmm. like King Jimmy. Uh, so the Lord said, "I will wipe out mankind whom I have created from the face of the earth, men and animals and creatures that move along the ground and the birds of the air. For I am grieved that I made them." That's Genesis six five through seven. So God proceeded to flood the entire earth, killing everyone and everything other than Noah, his family, and the animals in the ark. All else perished, including the Nephilim. Right, but wait. Did but, the ne- numbers. but wait, there's more. So did the Nephilim reappear in the Bible? And if so, why and how? Well, let's talk about it. So Genesis 6-4 tells us the Nephilim were uh, on the earth in those days and also afterwards. It seems that the demons repeated their sin. Now, this is this is gotquestion.org, and it seems like they are, are leaning towards more of the view number one. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna talk about their view. Uh, so, uh, however, it likely took place much less le- at a lesser than ex- uh, extent than it did prior to the flood. When the Israelites spied on the land of Canaan, they reported back to Moses. We saw the Nephilim, uh, there, the descendants of Anak come from the Nephilim. We seem like grasshoppers in our own eyes. And we looked at them the same. That's numbers 13, 33. This passage does not say the Nephilim were general, genuinely there. Only that the spies thought that they saw the Nephilim. It is more likely that the spies witnessed very large people in Canaan and in their fear believed them to be Nephilim. Or it is possible that after the flood, the demons again mated with human females, producing that more Nephilim. It is even possible that some traits of the Nephilim were passed on through the hereditary of one of Noah's daughter-in-laws. Whatever the case, these giants were destroyed by the Israelites during the invasion of Canaan, Joshua 11, 21 through 22, and later in history, Deuteronomy 3, 11, 1 Samuel 17. So, that kind of explains it for the for the number one, right? For that first theory that we talked about. But it also could explain it if we look at the, that they were just big people too, mm-hmm. right? That they had some sort of genetic makeup that caused them to, I mean, we see that all the time, right? You, you have dwarfism, you have giantism, you have these things still here in, in the earth today, yet we don't have these, we don't believe it to be because of demon possessed or demon, you know, appearing people that have caused mm-hmm. these things right uh just through dna genetics for whatever reason. It's, a, it's a genetic defect mm-hmm. um, which could be excused because of sin right right sin changes things and sin alters things you know i uh, feel like there's something that we just don't know in terms of because they said that we even saw them from the from the sons of this which makes me wonder is there a specific thing like whether uh, whether it's race, whether it's hair color, with like red hair is a weird gene, like whether it's something something biologically obvious about these people. Sure. Or if it's just the fact of like, if you were a huge person, you must be from the lineage of Anak because all of us five foot seven people are little. Sure. You know? Well, well let's talk about that a little bit though. So the Septuagint, which is a Greek translation of the Old Testament, which we knew was, oh, uh, I'm trying to remember when it was written. Was it 400 or 500 BC? Oh, I don't remember. I think is when it was put together by the 70 people or whatever, 70 translators, which is Septuagint LXX 70. That's what the tradition is. Um, they translated Nephilim with the Greek word for giants. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that's what the Septuagint did. This is not a direct translation of the word, but an attempt to communicate the idea of what the Nephilim were. We do know that giants are found in the Old Testament several times especially in conjunction with the Philistines, a.k.a. Goliath being the most prominent. These were not human-angel hybrids, but very large men, Deuteronomy 3.11. So uh, 
this is a question asked by many people, right? If God flooded the earth, but killing, that's my question. Killing yeah. all mankind besides the family of Noah, how is it uh, that Nephilim are still alive? Scholars have responded a few different ways. One answer uh, to this is the Nephilim were giants, offspring of fallen angels, sons of God, and human women. So fallen angels simply continue pr- reproducing but the I, human I woman after. Right now. Another answer could be the sons of God are fallen men. After the flood, different godly men had relationship with different ungodly women and produced the Nephilim once again. And that came from Christianity.com. So kind of those two prominent views that we see, right? We can see, okay, it could be one way, it could be other. There's op- opposing things to both sides that it could be or couldn't be. I'm, I'm at this point, and I'm not saying it will change, but I'm at this point leaning a little bit more towards the Sethite view, me personally, uh, but I was brought up on that on the view number one. So are they still around today, right? D- is the Shaquille O'Neal, the Yao Ming, are, are they? Like, that's my question, right? Are they descendants of the Nephilim? All right. Uh, it is quite possible, this comes from gotquestion.org again. Uh, it is quite possible that the Nephilim simply uh, became a semi-technical term for a giant warrior. It may have been some nebulous overtones of mystery as well. It might be similar to the modern term monster. It's a beast. That word can can be used to refer to size as in a monster truck or monster candy bar. It can also have a dark overtones. When someone is described as a monster, it can refer to an evil character. And finally, a monster might be some kind of supernatural creature or even something of a hybrid like a vampire, werewolf, or Frankenstein's monster. With our limited knowledge of the word Nephilim, it appears the Nephilim were gigantic, mysterious warriors of uncertain DNA, to use a modern term. To the people who observe them, they seem to be unnatural. Even today, we have giants among us. The average NBA and NFL player is freakishly gigantic compared to most of us. Yep. This does not mean there is a human or there is a race of human angel hybrids who are secretly in our midst. It seems that the Nephilim, at least in the times of Moses and Joshua, were simply descendants of Anak, who was an extremely large and fearsome. Uh, <coughs> if so, then it is possible that there were descendants of them today, just as today there could be a descendant of Moabites, Amalekites, I'm sorry, Amalekites, Hittites, and Babylonians. See, that's that's where my brain's going is the fact of they obviously had to be some big bros. Well, and so you know? again, Nephilim. You know, if it's translated giant ones in the Septuagint, that Greek word means that uh, could it just be unnatural, right? We we see it as an unnatural, just like um, I think of a lot of people with mental disorders and stuff like that back 100 years ago would have been seen as possessed, unnatural, and those types of things, even just 100, 100 150 years ago. And we put them in insane asylum. And yet we find today, no, it's a chemical imbalance. It's a g- uh, genetic defect, you know, d- depending on whether you have a physical um, formality or a mental or, you know, any types of disabilities, um, that this is just um, some sort of defect in your uh, genetic makeup, right? And, mm-hmm. and it's not your fault and it's nobody's fault and it's not a bad thing. It's not like they said, oh, who did send his, him or his father type of thing like back in the New Testament, Jesus day. It's like neither. It was for the purpose of God. And so some of these things, if that was for the purpose of God, right? Blindness, lameness back in the Bible, right? Back when Jesus was saying that, uh, he wasn't saying it was a sin. He was saying it just is. It's a result of sin. We know that because if, if we were still in the perfected state with God, none of this would happen. We'd be perfect, right? Mm-hmm. And that's why when he comes and reestablishes himself here on earth again, everything will be made perfect again. So, uh, and we had an episode on kind of talking about that with uh, Revelation 21 and the Isaiah 65 uh, some time ago. So why does any of this matter? That is the question of the day. And, why and, the heck and, does this matter? And this is kind of where I'm going <laughs> to... I'm, I'm going to read this, and it comes from Answers in Genesis, so okay. take it as you will. Um, some people like it. Some people don't. Uh, I find some of their stuff really good, and other stuff I kind of just like, eh, whatever. Um, but take it as you will. Uh, they they are doing or trying to do the work of God and, and try to help in any way that they can uh, help people's understanding. So you got to give them credit there because I'm sure we say some stupid stuff sometimes, and we think it's right and it's wrong. <laughs> or calling certain people homeboys out of – a joke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and read this. So it comes down to, uh, so this is what it comes down to in my mind. It comes down to studying difficult passages of scriptures and how we can relate to each other during those times of disagreement, right? So is it important to know about the Nephilim? Well, everything in the Bible and everything in scripture is important. Uh, 
But in this instance where it is not clear cut, I think, and we're speculating, I think we need to have, um, it, it should give us some pause when, when we're dealing with each other. We shouldn't be dealing with, out of anger or out of like you're a dummy because you don't think the same way I do. So I really like what Tim Chafee from Answers in Genesis said back in January 1, 20. 12. He said, when we run into difficult passages like this one, we must first ask ourselves if a key salvation issue is at stake. And it's not. Then we must determine if some interpretation violates other clear scripture passages or if the Bible's authority is at stake. Does this position come from the passage of scripture or does it rely on secular ideas for support? For example, those, this is for just for example, for those who seek to add millions of years into the Genesis account of creation are trying to force secular ideas into the text. So it's crucial for us to stand against every such attempt to undermine the Bible's authority. Again, this is his opinion. Uh, we've stated our opinion way back in the way back train. It's a couple of years back in an episode on science and faith. Uh, studying the nature of, of the sons of God is interesting and profitable, but certainly not as crucial and as clear. Unequivocal re- revelation about six literal days are as clear and crucial as and unequivocal as six days of literal creation. Uh, we all have the duty to rightly divide the word of truth, 2 Timothy 2.15, no matter what passage we're examining, comparing scripture with scripture. But Christians will likely continue to disagree on this topic until the Lord comes. So we need to show grace to other believers agreeing to disagree. We can still to, uh, join together with them in the furtherance of the gospel and the glory of the Savior. So what I love about this is like me, my father-in-law, right? He's probably the, one of the most godly men that I know, right? One of the guys I look up to the most um, as a spiritual leader. And I know he's got his faults, right? We all know we, that we all have faults. Mm-hmm. Um, but a guy who studies and tries to do his best. And him and I have different eschatological views, right? End times. End and, times. Yeah. And we still love each other and respect each other. And we even joke about it now, right? Because we know, okay, we see it differently. And we've kind of agreed to disagree on it, even though we still plug at each other. That's like, oh, oh. Man, maybe the rapture will happen today, or he'll be like, "Oh, you know, I'm just preparing myself to go through the tribulation." You know, he pokes at me, and so, <laughs> but it's kind of a joke, and, and it's not. It's good it, fun. It's done in fun, not out of spite, not out of trying to hurt each other, but just kind of joking around about it because we've already kind of agreed to disagree, uh, and we may, uh, you know, continue to study the passage together, and we have. We've come back at different times, talked about different verses surrounding it, but that's one thing that we should do. And, and to me, that is how, if it's not heretical. If it's not against the crucial key salvation issues of the scripture, if it does not violate the core doctrine of the scriptures, uh, and it's stuff like this, like the Nephilim, um, j- just other aspects of, of scripture, like hey, did Adam have a belly button? Uh, you know, it, I think it's fun, fun and fine to speculate to a certain extent, as long as it doesn't violate scripture. But we should be showing love and grace with each other if we differ. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's kind of what, why does this conversation, why are we having this conversation? It's to show, yes, it's important. And yeah, Hey, it's fun to talk about. And we, we still don't have a definitive answer. We have our opinions, right? And after mm-hmm. reading this, I hope you guys maybe will go back and study some more, especially some of these different views. I really encourage you guys to look into the set view because it is interesting and it's intriguing. If you've never heard of it before, mm-hmm. uh, I, I cannot definitively say what view is a hundred percent correct. Um, like I said, I was brought up in the view of, of demons or angels and, and women. I'm leaning a little bit more towards the set view now, but I still could be wrong. It may not be none of those views, right? It could be something totally different that nobody's ever thought of. Mm-hmm. So it's yep. just one of those. My, things. My, my gears are churning really hard right now. I'm sure you can see it. Um, you know, I, I think this matters more than what we think specifically in regards to the idea of, let's just be honest, humans and angels mating and having kids. Sure. I think that completely changes the biblical narrative in terms of Jesus became a man. If he could have just became an angel, he could have just became an angel and sure. done other things too. But the fact of, you know, Jesus found himself in the fashion of man. He became a man just like us, and right. he died on the cross to reconnect us back with God. And if we see that with angels, you know, they were already created beings, and they chose to leave heaven and they've already became fallen sure and the idea of them procreating with with humans i feel like completely changes the narrative in terms of how this world is supposed to operate and work i feel like it brings too much chaos 
well into it. But that's when people go, oh, well, what about the the second view we talked about, the demon possessed, right? Right. So okay, that that doesn't violate that because it is scripturally backed. I agree with you. That view that the the number one view. It gets a little sticky and hairy, right? It requires a lot more study into but, actually and, what the yeah. context and the words mean. And and then you have to start contemplating of, um, is it create being, created being? Are they similar to us? Could it happen? I, I mean, again, I have to go back to they're never, neither married or given in marriage, right? Right. And, and a, a key issue in being given in marriage, in marriage is becoming one flesh. I have made Eve from Adam, and the two shall become one flesh. The man shall leave his father and mother and cling to his wife, right? Those are some key important biblical passages that I think I agree with you that that you have to be careful when you're looking at that because they do contradict Scripture at that point. Now, we've seen other issues in, with, with biblical texts, right? Isaiah 65 and, and Revelation 21 that when we look at it, it may seem contradictory, right? Mm-hmm. But is it, or is it just the way we're looking at it? Right. And so that's where we have to have to be careful, too, of saying, no, it, that, that can't be that view, because are we looking at it right? We need to break it down to what did the author mean when he used the word, and he penned that word, and what was that word, and what was the alternate meanings to that word, and what can it mean? So, And, you know, when we look at the Old Testament, we got to remember, you know, that was more of everything was in the viewpoint of God's chosen people, Israel. Right. And now it's the idea of God had a physical people, but now God has a spiritual people. And so what does it mean for us today? I think the... The, 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 the challenge and the encouragement and the, 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 the seriousness of the matter is the fact of, are we people who are following after Jesus, mm. but, and, and intermingling isn't the right word, but the idea is the fact of, you know, the, the light and dark can't come together and make more light. And the idea is, that, specifically when it comes to marriage, because that's what it was talking about here with the fact of what type of next generation are you raising? What type of next generation are you raising? What type of next generation are you raising? And we see that all throughout Scripture where fathers are at, as you go, you're supposed to be talking about Jesus and the Scriptures. And sure. it's not just supposed to be a, on Sundays and during Sunday school and we have family devotions every Wednesday. It's supposed to be all the time fathers and mothers supposed to be pouring into their kids. So I think there's a reality that we need to have an understanding of you know, God takes seriously the fact of who we decide to marry and spend the rest of our lives with and, and the goals and purposes of that comes in there. So right. does it, does what the Nephilim means, does that, does that is the most important thing? I don't think that's as much important as the fact of the seriousness of the fact of if we are the sons and daughters of God, what are we doing screwing around with people who you know, love and thirst after wickedness and right and, and mm. unrighteousness and sinful sure. behaviors. Yeah, because that's what it went that. back to Jude. We're talking about you know they, the angels did this the same way Sodom and Gomorrah did, and the right. fact of no, 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 no. If you're holy, what what are you doing doing over there? Yeah. You know I, that we I, yeah. and so I think this is a challenge for a lot of people who particular maybe thinking about dating or or marriage or you know I, I don't know what you're doing with you on Tinder or the club whatever you're trying to do you're trying to find somebody to hook up with or whatever and the idea is the fact of God takes this stuff seriously yeah and that's kind of where my brain went in, in terms like of it. application the fact of God it it matters who we choose to be partners with the rest of our lives sure and you know it goes back to the the, the two oaks uh, 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 don't be unequally yoked find so, someone who is you know, also for lack of a better word on team Jesus. Right. So that way you can move forward together and, and literally change the world for Jesus. So I, I love what you just said. And here's my final thought. I'm going to take it a step. I'm done. I'm going to take it a step further. Right. So okay. it's not just talking about relational. Okay. Right. So, uh, uh well, it is talking about relation, but not just in terms of dating not just or, marriage, marriage. or marriage, but and your relationships with your those close friends, those people that are part of your, like we like to call it here, your tribe, right? Your tribe, yep. The, the tribe should not be unequally yoked because then you're pulling in different directions. Now, you can have friends who are unrighteous. Oh, you should. And you should, right? We're supposed to be in the world but not of the world. So where we where we gain our sustenance from should not be from worldly things, from worldly people, from worldly matter, such as like we shouldn't engross ourselves. It's the same thing we always talk about. We shouldn't engross ourselves in, in the media and to where we're totally distracted from the things of God and studying God and and really realizing what our purpose on earth is. But we have married the world and are falling in and worshiping the gods of the world just as they did back then, the Nephilim, and, and produce Nephilim, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we have to be careful and we have to make sure that we are, though we are on earth, we are still diving into God and staying, uh, quote unquote, married, married to the righteousness of God, right? And not married to the unrighteousness of the world.
time for Fun Facts with Fillmore. <laughs> All right, my dude, let's end this episode because we literally got five minutes before we jump live into this Facebook. I know it ain't no time. You're going to have to run to the bathroom real quick. Without don't my you, phone and Instagram. Don't take your phone. Ah, you do that, you're going to say it. All right, so the fun fact of the day is, did you know watermelon is Oklahoma's state vegetable? No, come on. Yes. Really? So here's another case of are tomatoes fruits or vegetables? You may remember differently from preschool, but watermelons are actually classified as a fruit and a vegetable. I did not know that. Watermelons came from a cucumber and gourd family, uh-huh. which are vegetables. So in 2007, Oklahoma declared the watermelon as their state vegetable. <laughs> their state fruit? Strawberries. I uh, <laughs> absolutely love that, man. Yeah, so. And so now every time you eat watermelon, you can be sure that you're eating both your fruit and your vegetables. Duh. Which yeah. which um, our but, family but, is obsessed with watermelon. But see, here's what I think, right? Because you're only supposed to have like one serving of fruit a day to cut down on the sugar. And then you're supposed to have like, I don't know, six, I think six. So if you just eat watermelon, you can say, well, this, this, piece, this counts as a vegetable, guys. Th- this piece right here, that's the fruit. And the rest of this watermelon is all vegetable. I, say, but I eat like two apples. A day. I'm out of apples right now. It's actually kind of sad, apples. but I eat like two apples a day. Yeah. But that that's a solid fun fact. I know. Oklahoma state vegetable is the watermelon. Is the wa- do other states have state vegetables? And state I'm fruits. sure they do. Does Indiana have one? I bet they. We'll see. Know. We're gonna find out. We'll, we'll, we'll tune in next week to find out if Indiana has a state fruit or vegetable. But guys, just like always, it's been an absolute pleasure hanging out with you guys for another episode of Real Talk Christian Podcast. Wow. I almost just spit on my microphone. Uh, just like always, we would love to continue the conversation. So jump in the Facebook group like we've already teased a lot about. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Facebook. If you have any questions that you would like us to talk about in the show, that is one way to do it. Or you can head over to the website, realtalkchristianpodcast.com. Find all the other episodes, but you can also find our email address, our phone number, or just hit the contact form right over there. And don't forget to check out our YouTube channel. Oh, that if you wonderful haven't, place. If you haven't already, go to YouTube, Real Talk Christian Podcast, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification we are getting ready to launch go ahead Ding. <laughs> we are getting ready to launch our mini series on oh. apologetics as soon as uh him this young gentleman right here and i stop recording a baby. well we're not going to have a baby no. you're going to have a baby with beth no beth is having the baby and I'm while you guys up. are having the baby i'm going to be putting out content to youtube only right now there's 600 subscribers let's push that let's try to get 1,500 subscribers this year. I love year that idea. So. And if we want to help continue to grow the podcast, make sure you leave a rating and review anywhere you listen to podcasts and share this episode with someone else who you think would enjoy these conversations. Well, we love you guys. And until next time, take it easy.